energy for processing of rare earth element from iron adsorption clays um, being provided by Professor Johan Peterson. A brief introduction about me is I'm a chemical engineer by profession. Uh, my, I'm finalizing with my master's in chemical engineering at University of Cape Town. Uh, I have four years of experience as a mineral dresser in the government of Uganda, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. My current research project is in energy for processing of rare earth elements, REE, from iron absorption clays. Uh, rare earth elements are group of 15 nanites, yttrium, and scadmium. The common group has light rare earth elements and heavy rare earth elements. And they also commonly occur. These are the ores, as carbonate ores and phosphate ores. The carbonate, the carbonate ore is the bastionite and the monazite and tenotype phosphate ores. Though our major uh, emphasis is on the iron adsorption clays, the iron adsorption clays are aluminum silicate weathered crust ore. Uh, and the why, why the emphasis is because they're easily mined. Uh, this is the scalvinium yttrium from the credit table, and that's the, those are the rock particles. But unlike for clay ore, uh, you have to form macro size uh, agglomerates to improve the permeability. And this is uh, my kind of research to improve permeability of uh, a clay ore heap by agglomeration to, to form more solution flow channels and reagent uh, uh, flow channels. Uh, so you start by uh, pressure compaction, uh, macro, you compact the macro clay particles to, to macro size uh, agglomerates. And uh, these they form voids and increase permeability of, of the ore. Uh, at laboratory scale, you park the agglomerates in a, a column. <clears throat> Uh, and at the bottom, uh, you collect the pregnant leach solution that you take for testing. Uh, test this uh, using the ICPMS and also characterize the, the waste ore by use of the same and the XRD techniques. Uh, testing the effect of agglomerate uh, size, uh, we treat the suspended agglomerate uh, as a single large heap. Uh, this does not have in the solution flow channels. Uh, they have to be created uh, because of this resistance uh, so that the, the solution flows through the agglomerate. And uh, this is the experimental setup to test the suspended agglomerate. There's some discussion, effect of radiant type concentration and the recovery of where as elements from iron adsorption clays, uh, reagent type, the concentration, uh, all these uh, variables uh, affect the recovery of rare earth elements from iron adsorption clays, even in non-aggregated systems. For aggregated systems, uh, the intersection was carried out before. And uh, the only difference between uh, this investigation and the previous investigation is the permeability and the iron constraints that are experienced in unaggregated systems, as they would have been experienced in heap lynching or in situ lynching. Uh, this shows that the lynching has to proceed for more than 30 days to achieve 80% recovery. Even at laboratory scale, uh, without agglomeration, you find that the, the heap uh, is, 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 is overflowed with solution, and that solution does not flow the bottom to actually collect off the pregnant leach solution, pregnant leach solution that is taken for analysis. Uh, you also see that uh, there is a fractional, a fractionation effect that occurs uh, with time. You see that the heavy uh, rare earth elements uh, start to, to get extracted at higher percentages with time. Though this this may be attributed to the those that are considered to be the heavy rare earth elements, for example, uh, the for example the samarium, the gadolinium, uh, the rutatium, uh, those come off at uh, with prolonged times. Uh, 
and when you you use another reagent for example magnesium chloride hexahydrate the light rare element the fraternation is even seen at the start of the experiment uh, because this was carried out at a, a lower flow rate uh, which gave the, the experiment uh, and uh, the leaking solution more residence time more contact time with the O and you could see that there was a, a, a better curve uh, produced between the heavy rare earth elements and the light rare earth elements. Uh, so the conclusion, uh, agglomeration of clay particles uh, to macro, macro agglomerates improves permeability of the unadsorption clay heap. Uh, the kinetics uh, of RE desorption in uh, uh can reach 80% recovery in more than 30 days. This is attributed to the fusion and permeability constraints. Uh, the lynching reagent concentration of the lynching reagent affects the RIE extraction in the systems. Uh, for example, column leaching at laboratory scale that can be used to mimic heap leaching scenario. Recratization of the spent or tailings after lynching provides insight for mite collapse in heap or in situ leaching operations. The type of leaching reagent affects the stability of clay agglomerates. Research project can to be solving challenges such as with SDG7, that's in the application of RAE, uh, elements in the green energy production, uh, that's in the production process. Uh, by agglomeration, you reduce uh, the time uh, for which you hold the heap because you have improved permeability. Uh, and you have also limited the, the effect of the diffusion constraints uh, and also SDG8. Uh, this is uh, the global resource efficiency in consumption and production. So that is in the production side. Uh, we are uh, through agglomeration, you, 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 are, you are limiting environmental degradation. Uh, how the the solution to this is, is through uh, not holding a lot of lynching reagent in the heap uh, uh, because you have limited the resistance uh, and increased on the flow channels, solution flow channels. Uh, most of, of this uh, reagent, lynching reagent, will flow through and you'll be able to collect off your pregnant solution. And uh, through this, you limit the uh, the amount of leaching reagent you irrigate in the heap, uh, uh, which leaching reagent can turn affect the environment. Uh, yes. Uh, also, SDG nine uh, foster innovation. Uh, the innovation is not only uh, downstream in the RE application, but also upstream in the hydrometallurgy for processing of RE. Or for this case, it is the clay type, type clay type, the iron adsorption clay ore. Uh, and this uh, through the, for example, the fractional effect uh, between the heavy earth elements and the light earth elements. Uh, this fractionation can be based on uh, for the separation of REE. And uh, when you separate the light earth elements and the heavy earth elements, this can is further downstream separation of RAE uh, as elements uh, acknowledgements to University of Cape Town for accepting me to take a master's uh, at the university, uh, especially my supervisor, uh, Professor Richard Peterson, for supervising me for this uh, research research project. Uh, Minerals to Metals uh, group, I am part of the, the group and it has helped me especially through the analysis and uh, also the seminars to commit better my presentations and also better my research skills. Hydromet uh, research group is a group I'm part of uh, at the laboratory. I also acknowledge it and also my ministry uh, for sponsoring me to carry out uh, undertake my master's at University of Cape Town for all the funding for my master's. Uh, 